This time on the show, Python plus Provoxy equals no more banner ads at the router level. 80 of dual core reports, plus a cloud syncing NAS without the hassles of building and maintaining a BSD box or messing with rsync to EC2. Not that you couldn't, but just this one's dead simple. All that and more this time on Hack 5. This segment of Hack 5 is brought to you by The Ben Heck Show. Hello and welcome to Hack 5. My name's Darren Kitchen. I'm Shannon Morse. This is, of course, your weekly dose of Technolust. Guess what else it is? Your birthday! Uh-huh. Happy birthday! And my hair's curly. Oh, I just I don't noticed. think I've ever done that on the show. I've always straightened I, it. Yeah, yeah. Really? No, I think I think back in the, um... Like the fourth season? Season 7? No. Nah, oh, yeah. Season 4 and Season <laughs> 7. Oh, okay. Yeah, because I remember there was occasion. one where you were, like, yeah. still in Missouri sending in footage from your pocket camera. Oh, that's right. Camera. I was lazy one day and I was like, yeah, I'm gonna record. Uh, screw straightening mm -hmm. here. Meh. Mm. Well, anyway, Maybe I did. I just went through all those. there could be a wiki that tells you about Shannon's hairstyle and everything else, but, but, but we don't but know. Our, our Maybe it's on the dark net. Our site got uh, Oh, well, uh, don't worry about that. Yeah, um, that was sad. Actually, maybe we would all have to move to the Darknet just to see it if current oh, legis proposed legislation goes through. Yeah, I know. Patrick got really oh. riled up about it on Techzilla. We've been talking about it on TNT. I'm really riled up about it. it just, of course, you guys know already we're talking about the Stop Online uh, Piracy, Piracy Act, Act. The, uh, the the proposed legislation that would you know give the government uh, and 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 this is this it would give them the ability to on behalf of copyright holders because we know Hollywood. that through the DMCA they've never done anything bad like sue grandmas that don't even have computers right, but the ability not. to go after sites and payment networks and internet service providers and advertising networks and basically search engines anyone that's involved with linking or giving you the ability Facebook, to go to Twitter. any website that they deem they don't like yeah as soon as there's just like an itty bitty link to some kind of copyright infringement that you may not even know about on mm -hmm. your twitter or on facebook or even on google the search engine they'll they have every right according to this uh very very bland act to completely delete the site yeah and this to is take it down and this has actually been happening recently with like ice taking down stuff at the dns level and it's just like wtf you know like who gives you you know anyway it's it's like it seems just, like all of the uh, the congressmen are backing this, and they don't really know the full story. And well, I really wish we had some more technical people go in there and tell them Google, how it really is. Yahoo, Facebook, Twitter, so many others are against this. But then again, we just found out this week that Nintendo, as well as the Business Software Alliance for the BSA, you guys know them as uh, as a organization that represents Microsoft, Autodesk, Adobe, so many other companies that are interested in software piracy are all for this. And oh. anyway, it actually, the latest seems like the, it might not go through in the way that it is, but I'm afraid this is one of these things where they're, you know, they propose it like, we'd like to, we'd like to censor the internet and kill babies. And they're uh, all like, yeah. whoa, whoa, whoa. Did somebody say kill babies? No, Nick's the killing babies part and then we can pass this. And it's like, we've yeah, it's gotta better. rise up with our plastic forks and do something about this. Mozilla.org slash SOPA has the links to where you can find all of the EFF good stuff. Oh, uh, good. Okay. You know, uh, I'll need so, to check that yeah, out and start to protect emailing the Basic, congressmen. Well, that, that's what they do. Over at the EFF, they make it really easy. If I put like 94801 and then submit my zip code, and just a second here, it'll actually show me who my senators are, my, ah, uh, my okay, House of Representatives. Cool. I know that if you're in the UK or anywhere else in the world, you're probably like, come on, what? But, you know, unfortunately, a lot of times those things follow suit. I mean, mm -hmm. look at, like, Canada and the DMCA. Yeah, that's true. So I'm really riled up. You need to be riled up as well. It's time to take action. And, um, and yeah, I just encourage you guys to go and get more educated. I yeah. mean, maybe you're all for this. Maybe you want, you know, copyright holders to be able to blacklist DNS stuff. Uh, or maybe you're interested in ways to thwart this on a technical level. Uh, I should pro probably point out MafiaFire.com. It's where you can get a plug-in for... Uh, Firefox and for uh, oh, Chrome. What does it do? Well, when ICE started delisting stuff on DNS level, like yeah. like torrent sites that would legally link to some torrent files, mm -hmm. right? A torrent isn't necessarily illegal. You know, there's plenty of great. It could be an episode of Hack Five that's completely There you go. To Absolutely, right? Well, ICE says, hey, you know, we're we're nixing it. Uh, they just take it out of the DNS server. So then, when your browser goes, hey, what's the IP address of this server? It goes, what server? Oh. What domain? We don't see the domain. Oh, okay. The domain is registered, 
but we're not going to feed you the IP address for it. So unless you so know, so what does the plugin do? Oh, just it kind of Redirects puts you? it back. Well, it puts it back in. Ah. Yeah. So it locally <laughs> nice. knows the IP address. So okay, it's like, cool. all right, fine. I'll remember two o six dot three four eight dot whatever it, has a it is. Really good memory. Yeah, actually, the crazy awesome. thing about this is when I first like started seeing this whole SOPA thing, I was like, dude, whatever. I'm just going to get on open DNS. You can block all the DNS listings you want. I'm on open oh. DNS. Not yeah. so much. Oh, really? Turns out that would fall under an internet service provider, and then they would be legally obligated to, uh, you know, to, uh, you know if the government says block that, then open DNS would have to do that. It's like, WTF. you know, it's my birthday. We all have to go to tour. Listen to me and not pass this thing, because boo. Let's, let's talk about something happier. It is, it is your yeah. birthday in, in any case. You know what? Mm -hmm. I have some happy news. We got a gift. Oh. Well, I, I kind of got a gift. You got a gift. I did. I, it's supposed to be a gift. This is Bam from Bam our Bam. good friend, Dale Chase. Oh, isn't that adorable? It's so cute. Wait, can I wear it like... Is that, is that Elmo gangsta? or Grover? I'm going to get so many Elmo? emails about that. I it's, it's Elmo. Elmo. Yeah. I never watched right. the show. No, one of them's a Muppet and one's not. No, they're both Muppets. I'm really confused are when it comes to Muppets on and Sesame right? Street. Okay, yeah, his sunglasses are on right. I'm going to leave the sticker on there so I'm cool. And you're going to tilt it so you're a gangster. What up? Yeah. All right. <laughs> well, thank you guys so much. As you know, you can just uh, give your gift to Dale Chase and he will make sure that it comes by the studio. Or you can just mail it to 548 Market Street, number 39371, San Francisco, California, 94104. That's right. Yes. <laughs> We should probably get going because Paul wants it to be a little shorter up Yeah, let's do this. Yeah, anyway, we'll be back with network attached storage with a cloud spin and killing ads at the router level with Provoxy after a quick word from one of our sponsors. Join modding wizard Ben Heck and friends as they build and modify a host of amazing community inspired creations. And be sure to watch new episodes of The Ben Heck Show every two weeks right here at revision3.com slash TVHS. In the latest episode of The Ben Heck Show, in the Thanksgiving spirit, Ben looks around his shop to see what projects can be built from the year's leftover parts. The results? An exerciser for your chunky cat. <laughs> Stay tuned to element14.com slash TBHS to find out how you can enter to win Ben's final cat exerciser or exorcist, I'm not really sure, as well as all of the latest builds from his show. There has been a huge move from local data collection to storing stuff in the cloud or on a network share. The Pogoplug Mobile was recently released and it pretty much has the power of both. It's a perfect little tool for people who want to be able to access files from anywhere and upload files on the go, hence the name. To get this guy started, you just plug him into your router and stick some sort of external drive into it, whether it be an SD card, an external hard drive, or even a flash drive, and you just leave him there sitting on your computer desk. Cool. After that, and after you've activated your Pogoplug mobile and created a new account, of course, you can access and store files on the black box from your phone, your tablet, or your PC. The Pogoplug guys have even created really streamlined apps for your iPhone, your iPad, and your Android device. The, the apps are mostly just for streaming files, so there aren't a whole lot of advanced capabilities like you'll see on the PC version. Now back to the Pogoplug Mobile. This device has, it's about $80 and it has USB 2.0, an SD card slot, so you have infinite storage expansion, if you will. Since it is 2.0, the fastest files that can be transferred are about 30 megabits per second and it does have a gigabit ethernet connection. From your computer, you go over to my.pogoplug.com and log in to see all the files that have been uploaded to the Pogoplug Cloud or to the Pogoplug mobile device. And my SD card you'll see over here is about 16 gigs and I've only used about 640 megabytes so far. Pretty good. With your device activation you also get five free gigs of cloud storage. And over here on the side I can click on Pogo Plug Cloud and it shows me I've used 7.5 megabytes of my five gigs. Pretty nice. The online interface is really easy to use and understand with Files sorted by type at the top, so I have my just regular files. I can look at music by itself, photos, movies, sharing, and there's also a nice little help center. And then over on the side, it sorts things by device. So I have my Pogoplug Mobile, which I haven't named yet, and my Pogoplug Cloud. 
When you first start it up, it'll take a little while to sync all of your files from the device to your PC. And we do have a very fast connection here at the studio, so I was able to time it pretty well. It took me about 20 minutes. I did find that my phone seemed to sync the files a lot faster. When I checked my Pogopug page on the PC, it was still going, so a little difference there. I also discovered after messing around with it that if you play an MP3 from the phone or the PC browser interface, it'll continue to play in the background while you do other things, including browsing other files on Pogoplug. So I'm going to try that right now. I want to, let's see, just going to play something in the background here. And I can look at other photos, browse around a little bit, pull up a PDF if I wanted to. And it works pretty streamlined. I don't have any issues with it other than uh, this image thumbnail doesn't appear to come up all the way, but eh, it's okay. I know what the picture is. From the app on your mobile device, you can also automatically upload photos and videos, but for iPhone users, you do have to turn on location services, services for this. I don't know if you have to do location services as well for Android. So overall, I found that the Pogo Plug is not only really easy to set up and use, but also perfect for anyone who is on the go all the time and wants to access all their files ASAP, with maybe a little bit of time for buffering, of course. I did want to mention that apparently there are some hacks for Pogo Plug Mobile, specifically this model, which is the Pogo V4A101, like getting Arch Linux on it and possibly Ubuntu. If you know more about this or you just want to give me your take on the Pogo, Pogo Plug Mobile, you can always email me, feedback at hack5.org, or leave me a comment below. They said it couldn't be done, so we hacked the water utility of South Houston. Elias Prof, officials say no way, he'll say he owned the SCADA. All you hacking source pinging government ports, Uncle Sam's coming at you with lethal force. The U.S. strategic command deems cyber attacks as threats against security of homeland. Anonymous anti-sec releases emails from high-tech law enforcement in a retired officer's Gmail for weeks. Leaked half a gig of investigative techniques. The W3C publishes their first draft for better online privacy. Broadcasts do not track the site here's. Could be ratified by the middle of next year. Yeah, news and drum fills. Peace to Hacker News and Eleanor Mills. Yeah, ha, one time for your mind. I'm Dale Chase, those are your Hacker Headlines.